Anybody that watches this channel regularly will know this is not hindsight. This has been my thought from day one. And that is that football has been living in a bubble. That decisions have been made along the way which didn't really consult the players. It was the TV companies basically negotiating with the Premier League, who are the constituent parts, are the 20 clubs. Whilst they've obviously wanted to get the show back on the road for monetary reasons, I've thought for quite some time that the individual has not played a part in the proceedings. The more I look at it, the more I look at footballers as being commodities, or if you want to use a sporting analogy, racehorses. It's it's like new market or Sandown trying to get the race back on. All the logistics are trying to get sorted. But of course, you don't ask the horses, do you? Why would you? You just, you know what? They're fed, they're trained, get out there and run. You don't get a say in the matter. And I just think by and large that whilst football has been making all the noises that they take everybody's health and safety first, it's all been platitudes. It's all been cliches. I don't think enough has gone into the thinking and the mindset of the players. Football's great at this, of course. Football's great at the grand gestures. I'm pretty sure football has a mental health awareness day and, and all so on and so forth. It does all the right things. It ticks all the right boxes. But really, at a time when football should probably be looking at the mental health of their players, it's just not done so. I've suspected all along that this was the case, but the suspicions have started to, let's say, dribble out at a slow pace. Our own Aaron Cresswell, we've discussed, Manuel Lanzini, Sergio Aguero, there, there were more. We knew there were more, and it was the case that the players would be at home and the players will be scared. You can't, ex you can't basically drum up a load of pandemonium because of the current pandemic and say it's dangerous don't go out wash your hands don't breathe on people keep your distance stay away all of these things and then say oh it's it's all right now because the pure and simple reason that it's all right now is because everybody's been locked up that's why the figures have gone down that's why the numbers have gone down people are starting to get let out we'll see in another week the numbers will rise again Europe has largely been on lockdown. What's going on in China? We don't know. You can't believe the information that comes out of countries like that. You can't believe the information that comes out of Russia, if any information comes on at all. But we're starting to see now, this is going to start to hit Africa, and we're starting to see it hit South America. It's taken a little while to get there, and now we're really seeing what's starting to happen. The moment people get let out more, it's going to start to build and build and build again. Why would this be any different to any other virus? It's just going to do what each one does. So until we get a vaccine, until we get a really good therapy, or until basically everyone's had it, this is going to be the way of things. And it's Troy Deeney who has come out, I think possibly the first big voice and most vociferous voice, to come out with something which I thought has been on their minds for quite some time, which is... If it ain't safe enough for fans to travel around, to go into grounds, why is it safe enough for us? We did a little joke the other day about socially distanced football and so on and so forth. But I mocked because it's not really possible. How on earth are you going to convince somebody that it's safe to get within two metres of somebody else? Somebody that is, by and large, somebody they wouldn't be allowed to meet up with in a park, for instance, and be two metres close to. To convince them that actually it's all right. But we've spent two months telling you it's not. Now, at this point, you've probably got to separate government with football. Because it's been football that has been pushing for this really hard. We've seen the Bundesliga people have tested positive. They're carrying on regardless. By the time you watch this, you may have already seen a Bundesliga game. You'll know how it's gone. But even if the game was successful, even if what you watched was entertaining... We are not going to know how successful those Bundesliga games have been in terms of the coronavirus until probably another couple of weeks. A primary school in Derby has had two children test positive. So the school has now closed down for another two weeks. Apparently it's undergoing a deep clean. I guarantee you that school already had undertaken rigorous deep cleansing throughout. 
yet it still happened. It's happened because somebody's brought it in. A pupil's brought it in or a member of staff's brought it in. And as I've said all along, if you can bring it in, then you can take it out. Now, football's going to have exactly the same thing. Three Brighton players have tested positive, right? So what happens? Look at the mindset of the footballer. If he's been sat at home perfectly fine for the last few weeks and now he's being asked to go into work, if he's been at home for the last few weeks, he probably feels quite safe. He probably thinks there's a certain sanctuary to being at home. And he's probably pretty confident not only does he not have it, but no one within his household has it. Troy Deeney said, what are they going to do? Not pay me? I've been skimped before. It's not a problem. Now, let's be fair. Troy Deeney is highly unlikely to be skint. I'm pretty sure Troy Deeney has probably earned enough money, if he's been careful with it, to last the rest of his life. But I totally understand what he's saying. Now, I don't think that anybody has come out and directly threatened Troy Deeney by saying you're not going to get paid. In fact, Watford, his club, have been one of the better. They've been one of the leading lights, as we've discussed before. Done a lot for the NHS, opened up their ground, and they've provided meals to people around, used their catering facilities that they would usually use on match day for the greater good of the community. So nobody said to Troy Deeney, we're not paying you. It's just his thought about it in his mind, he's extrapolated forward and worked out that this may be a risk of him not going into work. He's probably had the conversation in his head a few times and he's thought, actually, this is a risk. I dare say as a family, they've probably sat down and said, well, what's the point? What's the point in having all this money if we're not safe? Anyone can get it. I break it to you now that my wife's father has it. He's been in and out of hospital twice. His lung capacity is at 25%. We're hopeful he will be all right, but we don't know. And the point of the matter is, he's obviously got it off somebody. You may well be perfectly able-bodied, you may well be perfectly fit, and I would dare say the majority of footballers will be. But everybody they come into contact with is not going to be. Now, I know some people who are, just want to get on with life. I understand that. I know people that want to get on with life are not bothered about their own safety because they think they're probably robust enough to deal with it. But they're also respectful enough to understand that not everyone's the same. So they go about their business, but they keep their distance. They wash their hands. They sanitise their services. They do things like that. But the fear that a footballer will have about going into a ground, picking something up and then taking it home to either pass on to his loved ones or for their loved ones to pass on again. Balbuena is the West Ham player that's come out and he has said more or less the same thing. He's not happy about doing it. It's quite clear. We now know at least three West Ham players aren't happy. As you know, I've suspected for quite some time that there may well be five to ten players in each Premier League squad who won't be happy about this. As I've said before, there'll be some that will just crack on and do it. There'll be some who won't be happy but will need some reassurance and will go in and play. And there'll be others that there will just be no reassuring them. That's the way things are. We're all different characters. Everybody operates differently. And there'll be a number of them. And when you get to that point where you have an unbalanced squad, not the same squad that was participating in the Premier League before it got stopped, then you don't actually have the same competition. And I'm not entirely sure that you should be worried about the competition at that point. I would love to get football back on track. I really would. I'd love to watch it, but not, not if the risk is that players can get it. If every player gets it and every player's fit, is fine. But the cost of us watching football, if that's that a player gets it, takes it back home, and even that player's wife then passes it on to their dad who they're doing the shopping for or something like that, somebody vulnerable in their extended family, is that a risk 
of football? I don't think so. Of course, the big argument is that it's just a bit of flu. Well, the, th the thing is, people are comparing the rates. Normally, this many people die this month. No, no. The rate, and here's the point, the rate would be so much higher if everybody was just allowed out. And whilst flu does go on every year, it's not killing loads of people in the hospital. It's not killing the doctors. It's not closing down the country because that's what we're dealing with at the moment. And I just suggest this to you, that if a school has to close down for two weeks, then you'll probably get to a point where if this happens two or three times, the government will turn around and say to football, oh, you're going to have to close down for two weeks. And I think that football gets one shot at this. Only one shot. They restart, and from the moment they restart, that has to show the capacity that it can finish. If what happens is it starts, it plays two or three rounds of games, lots of people get sick, there's a spike in the infection rate in the country, and then football stops again, you ain't starting it again for a third time. You're just not. I believe League Two have announced that they're not going to go forward. How long can it be that they carry on with this? The players are not happy. Many of them are. We understand that Mark Noble is in the, the captain's WhatsApp group. Whatever that means, I understand Jordan Henderson's in there, as was Troy Deeney. But what this shows is not everybody is in agreement. I understand there are people within that captain's group who want to get the game going again. Maybe they're not fearful. Maybe some of them are single men. Maybe they have nothing to fear at all. Maybe they think, well, someone like Callum Hudson-Odoi, I don't know his marital situation, but he's already had it. He's recovered. Maybe he lives on his own. Maybe he's a bachelor. Maybe he's thinking, I don't care. I'll go out there and play. And I would defend their right to go out and as long as they're respectful and they don't, they respect everybody else that maybe wants to be, keep their social distancing and whatnot, I would respect Callum hudson Adoy's right to go out and play football. But I also respect Fabian Balbuena, Troy Deeney, and anybody else you care to mention who doesn't. So the real question in this is, can each club get 15 to 20 Callum hudson Adoys in their squad. Because if you've got any more than 10 Troy Deenies or Balbuenas, then football has no chance of restarting. 